A very long time ago, there was no light on the earth. Everything was surrounded in darkness. That was until a mighty hero used his hook to pull the entire sun close to the planet. This man was the guardian of the sun, who used the sun to regulate the seasons on earth. With the arrival of the sun, a strange man appeared from another world. The world of dreams. This man was the guardian of the moon, who brought with him the moon. With the moon, he brought along dreams. Together, the guardian of the sun and the moon brought balance to the earth. Several thousand years have now passed, and the sun is dragged around the earth using a gigantic stone golem, while a large monstrous bird-like being drags the moon around in the opposite direction in order to create the day and night cycle. However, the sun never goes beyond the land of the day, and the moon never leaves the land of the night. Thus, the world is divided into day and night worlds. The earth is inhabited by funny-looking creatures. The creatures on the day side follow the guardian of the sun, while others living on the night side follow the guardian of the moon. Once every several years, the guardians are elected to take care of the day and night cycle. In the day world, Sohoni, an extremely cocky and overconfident guy, not to mention a ladies' man, is about to be elected the guardian of the sun the next day. In the night world, a completely opposite, quiet and villain-esque man named Leon is going to be elected the guardian of the moon the following night. In the world between day and night, live creatures are made out of wax. In one such household lives a young wax teenager named Glim, who lives with her father. Glim is very excited to go and witness the crowning of the new guardian of the sun and moon tomorrow. Her father is adamant that she shouldn't because she would just melt and die just like her mother Ursula, who had now become just a handful of wax after going out in the heat wave of 3 pm. Glim, however, has no intention of listening to her father. Back in the night world lives a young, cheerful teenager named Mune. Mune is a very playful kid, and most of the time, it gets him in trouble. He stumbles into Leon's speech ceremony and is grounded by his father. Mune, however, has one special ability. He can calm down babies who are having a bad dream and make sure they sleep well. The next day, the sun and the moon are brought side by side by their respective drivers and the ceremony begins. In the day world, Master Zola, the old guardian of the sun, descends from the sun and grants his powers to the next guardian, Sohone. The whole ceremony goes on without a hitch. Mune and Glim both manage to get there to witness the ceremony. Right across from them, Yule, the old guardian of the moon, also starts the ceremony and calls forth the purest creature of the night to declare Leon as the guardian of the moon. However, the creature skips Leon altogether and declares Mune as the new guardian of the moon. A timid Mune is perplexed at what had just happened, but has no other choice but to accept his fate. As Yule declares him as his successor, Glim listens to his name in awe. Elsewhere, in the darkness of the underworld, the henchman of the evil monster, Necros, relates to him the news that the powerful Master Zola had finally retired, and so it was the perfect time for them to once again start with their evil schemes of stealing the sun. Necros agrees as well, and releases two shade serpents from within him to corrupt someone's soul so that they can use that person to enact their plans. The shade serpents head to the one man who had suffered the most in the past few days, Leon. The man is frustrated as his years and years worth of training had gone to naught, all because Mune was chosen as the guardian all of a sudden. The serpents notice the darkness in his heart and appear before him with a proposal. If he could somehow hand the sun to Necros, he would be the new guardian of the moon. Considering what had happened in the last few days, Leon really accepts the proposal. Elsewhere, Mune is taken to the large bird-like carrier of the moon. Atop the carrier is a temple from where several hundred strings hold down the moon to the carrier. These strings are produced by small white spider-like beings that reside in the temple. Eula familiarizes him with the temple. A series of strings can be used as a harp to control the temple carrier. He also shows Mune the trapdoor leading to the world of dreams, from where the first guardian of the moon had brought the moon. Mune is still not convinced that he is the true guardian. He thinks the creature had chosen him without considering anything. After all, he was bad at everything, and there was no way he could control the temple. However, before he could ask any more questions about how to operate the temple properly, Eula turns into a huge glowing plant that blossoms into a moon-shaped flower. Around him are several other plants just like him, from the other guardians of the moon. 
Elsewhere in the stone golem, Master Zola has now turned into a stone statue just like his predecessors. Sohone has taken over the temple, but to his disappointment, his harpoon skills are no longer required for running the temple. The temple now focused on photosynthesis, managing the weather, and other scientific things. Back at the Moon Temple, Mune tries to control the temple, but fails miserably. The strings start to break, and the Moon slips away from the temple. Even the carrier starts moving haphazardly without following its predestined course. Mune somehow manages to bring the Moon back with him, but the carrier has now gone dormant and doesn't move at all. So, Mune carries the Moon with him for now, like a balloon. From the Sun Temple, Sohone notices this and is furious at Mune for causing this mishap on the very first day of his job. Just then, Leon appears out of thin air and tells Sohone that he should reprimand Mune for being a disgrace to the name of the Guardians. He provokes Sohone to hand him the temple instead and the two could handle the business of the Guardians. After all, if the Moon Guardian fails, it meant that the Guardian of the Sun failed too. Convinced by Leon's words, Sohone takes his spear and heads to the Moon Temple, leaving the Sun Temple unguarded. Taking this opportunity, Necross's devil minions go and steal the Sun from the Temple. Just as Sohone reaches the Moon Temple, darkness starts spreading all around the world. From her home, Glim notices the two minions taking the Sun away and quickly rushes to find Sohone to notify him of this. Sohone, on the other hand, reaches the Moon Temple and finds Mune outside holding the Moon. He reprimands the teenager harshly, and takes the moon away from him, and hands the moon to Leon, declaring the man the new guardian of the moon. Saddened, Mune runs back into the forest. Just then, Glim arrives and notifies Sohone that the sun had been stolen. They turn around and see the final glimpses of the sun as it is dragged down into the underworld. Leon tells them that the sun was probably taken by Necross, and suggests that they go there while he takes charge of the moon temple again. In the underworld, Necross receives the sun and blows it out. Glim is a bit shy at first to travel along with her hero, but soon realizes that he is nothing but a big muscle head. He had been dragging them around the same place in a circle for about an hour now. Glim then decides to take charge and use the stars to find the way to the underworld, and soon the duo encounter Mune, who decides to travel with them, as it was because of him that they were in this whole situation. The three then travel together to the underworld. Back at the Moon Temple, Leon is ecstatic that he is finally what he deserves to be, a guardian, and commands the temple to work, but for some reason, it doesn't work. He then tries to send the moon back to the sky, but it doesn't leave the ground. Soon, in the absence of the sun, the moon starts to wither away, becoming smaller and smaller every second until eventually, the moon becomes nothing but dust. The final source of light in the world is now dead as well, and the whole world goes into chaos. In the absence of the moon, the temple starts haphazardly moving towards the underworld by itself. On their way to the underworld, the group stumbles upon Phospho, one of the old guardians of the moon who had been banished. He gives Glim some of his powers so that she won't melt by anything hot unless it is the sun itself, and decides to tag along with the group. Phospho tells them about Necross. Back when Phospho was the guardian of the moon, Necross was the guardian of the sun. However, he had gone evil one day and decided to keep the sun for himself. The world had been plunged into darkness. Then Zola arrived in time to stop Necross in his evil plans. The man had sent Necross down to the underworld and saved the world. Necross had stayed there for 300 years waiting for Zola to leave so that he could get the sun once again and had finally gotten what he wanted. The group then starts asking Phospho where he was and why he hadn't stopped Necross himself but the old guardian gets flustered and runs away embarrassed without answering. The truth was that the old man had hidden during all of this, like a coward, and that was also the reason why he was in exile. The group is confused, but decides to move on without the old man. They reach the gates of the underworld, but before they could jump in, Glim and Muna realize that the Moon Temple was there already, rampantly walking around. Muna decides that it's best that he takes care of the moon, and Sohone goes for the sun. So, Glim and Muna head to the Moon Temple while Sohone jumps to the Underworld. Muna goes to the bird-like carrier and notices that it is passed out. He has no other choice other than use his powers to bring it back to its senses and calm it down. He is skeptical as his powers have so far only been tested on children, but he decides to use it anyway. Surprisingly, his powers work and Mune is able to calm the beast down. 
He then heads inside the temple with Glim and notices that the moon is no longer there. With no other choice left, he and Glim jump into the trapdoor leading to the dream world. Back at the underworld, several hundred shade serpents start surrounding Sahone and provoke him to turn evil. Sahone starts losing himself to the shades, but Phosphu appears from out of nowhere and manages to save him from the little darkness and anger within himself. In the dream world, Mune and Glim are immediately surrounded by creatures of the darkness and they start harassing them. They even mess up with the animation style. However, Mune realizes that they are nightmares and he could use his powers to eliminate them easily and that is exactly what he does. He uses his magic to free the world from the nightmares and then carves out another moon from the large crystal at the center of the room. Mune and Glim return back with a new moon. Leon is amazed at what he just witnessed and finally acknowledges Mune as the true guardian of the moon. Mune and Glim then rush to the underworld to help Sohone who is getting beaten severely by Necros. While Mune and Sohone fight Necros together, Glim goes to bring the sun back to light. She blows hard on the sun and it starts to come back to its former glory. However, this causes her to melt away. Mune and Sohone witness this in terror and realizes that it was now or never for them. Mune then decides to use his powers and sends Necros to the world of dreams. Inside, there is no way Necros could ever harm him, and so Mune is able to pull out the Shade Serpent that corrupted Necros from inside him. Mune then proceeds to destroy the Shade and free Necros from his corruption. Necros then turns into a stone statue just like his predecessor Guardians, and Mune returns back to the real world as well. He gathers all of Glim's wax and remolds her, placing her in a sanctuary nearby along with a small piece of the moon. The two guardians then return to their temples after Sohone apologizes and claims Mune to be the strongest guardian ever. The sun and the moon are once again sent back to their original places and the temples are once again set back to their original course. Sometime later, when life is back to normal, Glim wakes up with the power given to her by Phospho. She doesn't melt in the day and with the new moon alongside her, she doesn't freeze in the night. She quickly rushes to Mune and the two friends reunite once more, this time as lovers. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.